be learning from time lapse technology. She holds a doctorate in genetics and cell biology from the Autonomous University of Barcelona. She obtained the senior clinical embryology certification by ASHRAE and the Esabirka certification in assisted human reproduction clinical embryology. She moved to the United States to join the Institute for Reproductive Medicine and Science and then returned to Spain two years later by Institute Marques to create the PGD service. She is the co-founder of the Center for Embryo Medicine, a genetic center specialized in pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. She is currently the director of the Reproductive Biology Service of Institute Marques, coordinating the IVF, Andrology, and PGD laboratories. She is also the director of the Center for Embryo Medicine, Dr. Esther. Thank you. Thank you again. I'm going to talk today about what have we learned about time light, time light uh, uh, microscopy, and in concrete, what uh, have we learned about embryoscope. So time lapse, as you know, uh, basically involve a series of 3,000 or more snapshots images that then uh, they are moved uh, they are move fast forward to provide a video sequence. With that technology, we can observe uh, the embryos periodically, and we can observe um, a lot of events that we cannot detect in a standard way. There are a lot of different systems on the market, and all of these systems we can split into big groups. The first one are the ones that use a dark field to analyze the images. Is the case of EVA systems. I don't know if you have heard about it. The, this system is widely used in the United States. These systems track the membranes of the cells, and we can have a tracking about the uh, with uh, about all cell divisions. But we cannot detect the inner uh, cytoplasmatic events that we can detect with other systems. In we have also well. One of these, these systems is very easy to use because you can adapt that system in all incubators that you have. It's mainly a, a camera where you put a dish on it and the camera itself records all the wells of its dish. So you can put as many cameras as you may need for an incubator. Primovision is another system that's quite similar to EVA, but Comparing to the, the other one, this system uses a, a, a light field. So you can also detect these cytoplasmatic events that are very, very important for embryologists. Also, as the other one, it's a camera, and you put a dish into a camera, so you, if you have three dishes, you will need three cameras. Uh, another kind of time-lapse system that came out on the market is, is not that a way to put a camera inside an incubator. The other concept is to make an incubator, to build a benchtop incubator with a camera on it. This kind of system is, uh, are a trigos incubator, and you can, ha uh, you can have a camera on it. So you, we have two different systems on the market. This is a very new one. It's called MIRI. And the, the most common use, at least in Europe, is the embryoscope. This incubator is a, a, an incubator that uses three gas. They recover the temperature, CO2 levels, and, uh, very, and humidity very, very quickly. And the good thing of this incubator is that um, you can have a space for 12 dishes. It means 12 patients, and each dish has 12 uh, wells on it. The only problem that the system has is that uh, it has only one camera, and the camera goes from one well to another well, tracking all the embryos with different snapshots in a different focus plane, and from one dish to another dish. So it doesn't mean that the, the camera doesn't record all the dishes at the same time. It goes from one to another. So when you uh, buy that and when you put that on your uh, laboratory, it's very important to adjust the number of snapshots that you want to do and the and the time that you want that snapshots, depending on the kind of observations you, you, you want to have on the lab. So we program that on our lab to have uh, one snapshot every 10 minutes. One snapshot, it keeps like seven focus planes. 
So, uh, what we have performed embryo selection since before, since we don't have the, the time-lapse technology, what we did in the lab is to take the embryos out to the incubator once per, once per um, day and to analyze the cell division, symmetry, pronucleus formation, fragments, uh, uh, percentage of fragmentation, symmetry between cells. But we have to keep the balance between how many observations we need to have in order not to uh, disturb the culture conditions of the embryos. So, but this can be possibly solved with this time-lapse technology. We don't have to take the embryos out of the incubator if we don't uh, want. If uh, you are using sequential media, you don't have to change the media until day five. So you can keep tracking the embryos without the need of disturbing these culture conditions. And this technology permits us to, to evaluate some morphokinetics parameters as uh, pronucleus formation, time to arrive um, to three cells, four cells, uh, four cells, five cells, or time uh, between synchrony, uh, synchrony between uh, cleavage divisions, or the time to, for, for the second cleavage division, third cleavage division, whatever. And apart from that, we can detect another event as multinucleation, that not just the multinucleation that we are used to detect uh, in the morning, multinucleation that appears and disappears, multinucleation that uh, fusion together, fragmentation, fragments that um, appears and then uh, fusion with another cells, two cells that fusions together, uh, cell rolling, and a lot of cytoplasmatic events that we even know before that this could exist. Timeless technology has been used until from the beginnings of late uh, 90s, but um, it was starting the application in human reproduction uh, a little late a little bit uh, late, and there's two publications that really makes uh, the start of this technology in human, in human reproduction. These two publications are the ones, the first ones that they just publish a model to, that, that use morphokinetic markers as, as a selection for, for the embryos. The first one was the one published in 2010 by the group of Wong, uh, they analyzed 242 frozen 2PN that were, this, that were uh, given for the search. And the, uh, um, this group, what this, uh, the, the end point that they uh, took for that paper was the blastocyst rate, no implantation rate. So they tracked the embryos developing until blastocyst uh, formation, and they took an image every five minutes. So they figured out that there are two parameters that were very, very important in order to predict the, mo the, the, the embryos that will arrive to last the stage. These two parameters were the CC2. CC2, you will hear this, this, this a lot. CC2 is cell, uh, cell cycle two, is the time that spend the embryo from the ICSI to arrive to, to, to the sec second cell cycle division, methodic division, and S2. S2 is the synchrony between the first and the second division for the tubulastomias. The second paper was published by the group of uh, Messegen. This is the first paper that they developed an hierarchic um, model in order to select the embryos based on morphokinetic parameters. What they did on, on that work is uh, they um, include, it was a re retrospective study, they include all cases that they already known the outcome of the, of the babies. For example, they include all single cases that they know that there is pregnancy or there is no pregnancy, and they include all double transfer embryos when they already know that both embryos were, uh, came out with a no pregnancy or both embryos came out with two, uh, two sacs pregnancy. So uh, then they take this data back and uh, they make this uh, model. You will see 11 kind of categories going from A plus is a better quality embryo and F the worst quality embryo. What's important in that paper, they, they make uh, exclusion criteria that uh, goes into category E and F. 
That means that uh, in this exclusion criteria, they, they define that uh, they can include the multinucleated embryos in day four, because I already know that it's a bug prognosis of an implantation uh, rate. And they also include block embryos, the embryos that are not cleavage, obviously, and the embryos that present direct cleavage, that, that the embryos that uh, divide from one cell to three cells at the first side, without going into two cells of stage that it would be the, the, the good one. So apart from that, uh, what's important in this paper is that they figure out that the most important marker to do the first selection is the concept of T5, time to arrive to five cells. Then they uh, do a second selection based on the concept of uh, the, the S2, the synchrony between cells, and finally, the time to arrive to, to cell cycle to cells. From that time that this paper was published, a lot of uh, papers has come out about morphokinetics because in, in Europe, embryoscope has been uh, adapted to a lot of laboratories, so a lot of people is publishing with uh, that technology. And they came out a lot of different markers that could be interesting for, for, our, for our selection, embryo selection. So you have here all times. Time, it means time two is time to arrive to two cells, time three, time to arrive to three cells, and this follow-up. So then we have, I, I don't have a, oh, okay. Then you have this, the time to arrive to a start compactation, time to moralize stage, time to start blastulation, time to arrive to blastosis, and then you have expanded blastosis here, and hatching blastosis. And apart from that, all variables, about duration that I have talked about, CC2, CC3, synchrony between two cells, and blastulate, uh, time to blastulate. And apart from that, you have all this multinucleation at two cells, four cells, eight cells, eight cells that it's quite new, and then uh, site ratio, fragmentation, and then other cytos, uh, cytoplasmic parameters that I talk about, that cytoplasmic waves, that the wave, uh, performed after the calcium release in the oocyte. Cell rolling, it means that when a cell starts rolling and then it's gonna stop, and we don't even know that if it's a good prognosis or not. Even an uneven blastomeres, that of cleavage from one to three or from three to five. Uh, this is, I can read, reverse cleavage, and cell expulsion and cytoplasmic, cytoplasmic strings that are the strings that form between inner cell mass and trophoctoderm in the blastocyst. So here you have the morphokinetics parameters that uh, in a row from this time to cleavage. Here it's the time that I told you about. It's a, a concept, I repeat that concept because if you're not used of it, it's, it's sometimes difficult to, to understand. Is the time that this, the embryo lasts from one cell to uh, two cells. Then here you have the synchrony, that's the time that spend the embryo from the, from the stage of two cells, that the first cell cleavage into three, and the second cell cleavage into, into four. So it means that this uh, period of time um, is a synchrony. So, and different papers that came out, they have the end point in a different way. What's important is that implantation rate is what we always want. We always want to have implantation, and we always uh, want to uh, take home baby brain. Uh, rate, but if you take implantation as uh, an endpoint, there are a lot of factors that interfere apart from blastocyst formation of good quality formation. So some of the papers, in order to take implantation as, as an endpoint, they take pregnancy rate, uh, I, they take blastocyst formation, or and now recently we are studying an embryo. So I'm going to go now uh, from one to other uh, about these markers. I'm talking now just for the group of patients that perform IVF, not the group of patients that we have with chromosomal risk that perform PCD, that I will talk about that, that uh, in the later of the talk. So pronucleus formation. I, I'm not, uh, I don't want you to focus about the specific time that different publications uh, give, because what is important here is to have the concept of which market is important for the embryologist in order to select the embryos. What is not important is to figure out if it's 2.3 hours 
or 2.4 hours because these specific times can vary from laboratory to laboratory. So I'm not going to go through that. What is very important is that you have the concept of what is a good marker, which marker you can use, and which marker probably you can not use. About pronuclear formation, the pronuclear formation is not a good market, but it, uh, it came out that pronuclear fading is one of the mo is, is one uh, market that you can. Uh, uh, well, it's very it's a very important market. This has been correlated about uh, the blastocyst morphology, and there's a positive correlation with uh, the quality of this also of, of this blastocyst. We have performed at our center in Cito Marquez and a study with uh, 243 uh, uh, embryos, and we figure out that the embryos that present better quality are the ones that present the pronuclear fading earlier than the embryos that present worse quality. What about early cleavage? As you know, early cleavage has been discussed during a long time uh, for a normal a standard evaluation of morphology. Uh, this early cleavage uh, we use uh, to check at 25 to 27 hours per exit. It means that we have to come late in the night to check this uh, early cleavage because it was related uh, to high pregnancy rate, high implantation rate, and high viability of blastocyst rate. And this early cleavage has been correlated also with time lapse. That's a very good prognosis factor. The embryos that cleavage uh, between 24 and 27 hours has the first cleavage are the ones that present better implantation rate. There are a lot of papers that came out about that concept. And uh, there's one that uh, from Cruz, I, I show you here on the last, that they, uh, ha, um, they uh, doesn't have any correlation about uh, the blastocyst development uh, related with that, that parameter. But Mostly what you can defer is that, uh, time, uh, that early cleavage is a good marker for implantation rate. And as I said, implantation rate can, there are a lot of factors that can be interfere with this implantation rate and not just the blastocyst formation. So the other concept is uh, time three, time four, and time five. These are very good markers for embryo quality. Here you have the paper, uh, the first paper that, that analyzed this data. I am saying again that don't take these numbers into account because probably in your hands will be completely different. But what is important is this marker, a good marker for embryo quality, and not just for embryo quality. You can use it as to predict the embryos that can reach blastocyst stage, and you can use it to predict the embryos that can have good quality of blastocyst, not just if the embryo could arrive to blastocyst. If you have this time correctly, you can use it to select the ones that could have more, uh, the better quality. So about uh, the time of compactation, the time of uh, starting blast, uh, the morulan, the, the, the time of uh, blastocyst, uh, this uh, time, uh, time of morulan, time of early blastocyst are also good markers of development. We have performed a study at, in our center that we, ha we have seen that these two markers are also correlated with the embryos that present better morphology at blastocyst stage. So now I'm talking about the cell cycle two and synchrony, these two here. And this, uh, was, uh, this, uh, these two parameters were the first one that were correlated with high implantation rate with, uh, in the work of Messege in 2011. And Wong also observed that this, uh, CC2 and S2 were a good predictor markers of blastocyst formation. But here it came out uh, uh, in a study that was published in ESRE by Cruz uh, this year that they found that it was not correlation with implantation rate. These people are the same group from MSG, so they hypothesized that probably it's what I say that implantation, there are a lot of uh, factors that can affect that, and probably the this group of patients included here and the group of patients included here probably have different theology and can, could affect the results. But they all, they, all of them, they really uh, emphasize that these two markers are the most valuable markers to predict uh, development. So now we have multinucleation that we can also observe and these other factors. 
Let me uh, show you here multinucleation. Multinucleation, there are a lot of papers that came out that correlate multinucleation with uh, chromosomal normalities on day through, uh, on, day, on day four, when we see multinucleation before, but there is nothing about multinucleation, multinucleation on day eight. Now people are standing, some authors are standing to say that until we don't find, uh, they don't have any good publication that correlates multinucleation on day eight with uh, an APLOD of bat implantation, it's better not to take this into account. But if you have a multinucleated force, uh, uh, embryo at four cell stage, you can discard it completely. So here you have a, an Im a video. Uh, it's uh, quite quick, but you can see here two cells with a lot of multinucleus on each cell, and you will see it, how it develops or not. Let me try again. Okay, you have this here. This multinucleation, the important thing of the multinucleation is that appear in a very few time. So with time lapse, you can record that. With the, the other system, probably this multinucleation and we, we couldn't detect it because at the time of uh, looking at the embryos, probably it won't appear. So here you have the image of blastomeres. When the blastomeres, the difference between uh, blastomeres is, less, is more than 25%. It's a very bad prognosis uh, factor, so you, you can always discard these embryos and not to transfer that, those embryos. And another concept that it's an exclusion criteria is the upper division or the direct division from one to three cells or from, two, uh, from three to five cells. Here you have an image. You will see here the start. Let me show you first. This now this, you have here three cells. And if I put it again, you will see that, that there is no any line between one to, three, one to two cells. It goes directly to three. I put it again because it's too quick. You go from one and then directly to three. Obviously, in the lab, we don't check the images as quick as, as this one. You have to check it slowly and you can stop it, and then you have to check it in a different focus plane all the time. Okay, and the first one is the cell fusion. Here you will see that. Is sometimes you, the, the embryo cleavage into three cells or four cells, and when the time uh, moves on, it, the, the, the cells fuse, and then you find out that there is one cell missing. So this is very also a very bad prognosis. You will see here. Okay, I stop that because you will see here that these two cells now are going to fuse into one. Okay, here you have. So depending on the time that you check the embryo, you probably you cannot defer that. And the last uh, thing that we are now discussing is about uh, cytoplasmic strings. The cytoplasmic strings are the, the strings that uh, the blastocysts have between inner cell mass and trophectoderm uh, cells. You will see it here. It's not working, this one. Okay, it's not working, but the image, well, the image is very clear when you see a blastocyst because it maintains, in order to be a inner cell mass completely isolated and the trophoctodem, you have these uh, connections uh, from the inner cell mass to the trophoctodem that this, uh, some, some authors say that are, very, are a prognosis that the embryo cannot implant. So, uh, with all of that, the take home message is that if we have to make an embryo transfer in day three, we can use, first of all, I recommend always 
to select the embryos by a standard morphology. When you have the, most, the, the better embryos to select it by a standard morphology, then if you have three embryos with the same quality, you can go back and, so, and select with uh, uh, about uh, morphokinetics markers. So if we have to transfer in the three, we can go back and we can select the ones that really has the tem uh, time of fading T2, T2 uh, T3, T5, CC2, and S2, the, in the range that uh, you can, uh, in a good range of, of cleavage. If you are having the transfer of day four, you can also use this marker, time of morula. If you are having the transfer of day five, you can have morula and expandoblastosis also as a marker. So, uh, but what happens with PGD embryos? I mean, we already know how IVF embryos behave, but we don't know anything about PGD embryos. What we have in mind always is that probably these embryos could be slower because if they have chromosomal normalities in, in, at the time to do chromosomal separation, that could, could um, interfere and probably can have a different time than the ones from uh, IVF. And Really, we wanted to, to answer a lot of questions with this study. Is, is there any, any relationship between morphokinetics parameters and the embryo chromosome dotation? Does an eoploid embryo have the same morphokinetics as uh, an eoploid embryo? Or uh, are there any good non-invasive market that we can use to select eoploid embryos in case that not performing PGD? So really, there are very few publications about that. Uh, a scenario. We have two main publications. The one is from Campbell in 2013, it's quite, quite uh, recently, and the one is from Basil, the group of uh, IVL also, that uh, present data in the edge, con uh, in the edge uh, about chromosomal normalities. They found out the, about pronograph formation, is a pronograph fading is not any longer a good marker to select eoploid or aneuploid embryos. And from the, if we check the time two, time three, time four, Campbell didn't observe difference between these parameters, so she says that we cannot defer upright and upright embryos based on those parameters. In contrast, uh, Basil they published that probably T5 is the only market that can defer between airports and airports. But there is just two publications and the numbers are very low. About the time of uh, starting compactation, morula and ex uh, expanded blastosis, Campbell uh, observed that these three markers are delayed, these three times are delayed in an eoploid embryo. It was the idea that we had first, so if there is any chromosomal normality, probably, probably it can delay uh, the cleavage, and they found out that these times in concrete are the ones that are delayed with, uh, with the cleavage and probably is the moment that they start differentiation probably is, is for that. And there is another uh, paper, well, another publication in, at the Asia Congress from Montgomery, and the way they take out all the embryos that has more than 15% of fragmentation, and they, and, and they there's no difference between this market. We perform a study at the Instituto Marquez where we uh, check all the embryos coming from PGD about these three, these, these four parameters. And we, the only one that we can have a difference uh, is about the time of morula stage. It's the one parameter, the only parameter that makes us a difference and could help us to predict between airplots and airplot embryos in our hands about uh, the, synchro the synchronity about cell divisions and about CC2 also. There is no correlation about these two parameters. And in contrast, Basil, they found that probably these two this CC3 is one of the markers that predict for them uh, the, pers the embryos that could reach to a higher eoploid, uh, or could be eoploid. But I repeat, it's just two studies and the, the number of uh, cases included are very low. So what we are doing now with PGD, so we, now we cannot use any, uh, any market because we not, don't have enough nat data. It seems that there are a lot of factors that can interfere on that. And we have to increase the data that we have. We have to increase the number of cases included in order to really to have a, 
uh, a better idea of what is going on. About multinucleation, we already know that uh, forces multinucleation uh, has a high ri uh, risk of chromosome abnormalities. And about, uh, nothing is known about eight cells and about uh, direct division, well, it's uh, also contro uh, controversial because there is no, uh, also there is no uh, correlation between these parameters also. When we start doing, uh, analyzing the embryos through the embryoscope, we had, uh, uh, we have a, well, a question of mine is because as embryologists, we some, sometimes feel that some embryos are quicker uh, with one media and go slower with another media. So probably uh, we start thinking about uh, if we, can com we cannot compare the data published from one center to another center if they use different uh, media. But it came out this, this paper, this paper is from the group uh, of Messege also, where they compare um, these two kind of media, Sage and Global, I didn't find any significant difference. Uh, there is nothing compared to uh, Vitro Life or Cook and other systems that at least it seems to be slowly than, than Global One. So the, to conclude is that morphokinetics uh, is, are very good parameters that can we use to select the embryos in order to have better quality or to have better implantation rate. But we have to take a lot of points into consideration. Each clinic, we cannot use the data that has been published to another group because each clinic must use its own model. The, the same system has a model that you can use it. Uh, um, you can put all your data on it and they give you a model of specific times to predict implantation and predict uh, quality formation. So it's very important not to use the, the, the times that the other people publish. And there are the other factors that you have to adapt when you start with the embryoscope. You have to consider that the embryoscope has six patients, six dishes at the same time. Every time that you take an, an, a dish out of the incubator, the incubator doesn't record anything. The camera doesn't record anything. That means that if you are taking the embryos out because each patient obviously will be in a different stage of IVF, you have to take the dish out you stop the camera, so probably you are missing some events that you cannot record. So it's very important in order to start working to think about how are your patients on the incubator or, and how you have to work in order to have the better image in the incubator and not, having, uh, and not losing uh, some images. The other thing is that you have to standardize all the parameters in the lab. It's not as easy to say, T5. T5 is the time to arrive to five cells, but when the embryologist record that time on the computer, the, you have to estimate with all your embryologists in the laboratory what is this kind of marker and which is the specific time they have to note it. Because it has to be clear, for example, in that parameter, the all cells has to be completely split. If you last like mm, one minute to record, you are going to change the data on the computer. So it's very important that all embryologists at your center work at the same way. The same scenario is when you put the embryos in, inside the incubator. Uh, I told you that uh, the images start recording at the f after you perform the ICSI and you put the dishes on the incubator. It's not the same that you have one case with two embryos or two of such fertilized, so you put the dish right away on the incubator and you start recording. It's not the same that if you have to do ICSI at one uh, patient that has 20 oocytes. You cannot wait until you do the ICSI on the 20 on the oocytes and then put it on the incubator. Are very little things, but if you don't consider that things properly, you can have your numbers uh, grown and then uh, your model won't fit. Another important thing uh, that has a lot of problems with this system is air bubbles. When you prepare dishes, it's easy if you don't prepare dishes well, that appears at uh, air bubble can appear in two, three hours, four hours. This air bubbles always likes to go to move and goes over the embryo and you don't have any image. So it's very important this, 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 this part because if you don't do this as well, 
you can you probably don't you probably arrive early in the morning, check the images, and you see that you lose all the images during the night because this this, this air bubble over your embryo, embryo and you cannot have any data. So it's not that I have the embryoscope and I can start using. When you start with the embryoscope, there are a lot of things that it's very important that you need to adjust in the lab before using that as, a, as markers to select your embryos. And, and finally, uh, it's very important to use it properly. If, if you have it, use it in order to select. And I, like to, uh, I want to finish with a video. Uh, we put music, we did a research last year where we include music on in the incubators as a source of micro abbreviations in a standard incubations. And we found out that the embryos cultured with music present a higher fertilization rate than the ones cultured without music for the vibration. So we start now putting music on the incubator in order to see if these micro abbreviations can affect the embryo development. And I want to show you how our embryos dance. It's in Spanish, but I'm going to translate it. It's this. Here you see now the pronucleus formation, the pronucleus. Now this pronucleus is going to fade because there's a compactation. And then there's first cleavage. And you will see now this from, three, from two to three and from three to four. That's the second day of after fertilization. Now the, uh, the embryos cleavage. You will see that with, when you see this image, embryos jump. It's the third day of cleavage. Now the cells start compacting. You will see. They start compacting the molar stage. And now we start the, the cleavage. And the differentiation of the cells. Now here you have the trophoctoderm and the cells. Okay. And thank you so much.